Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to Chemistry Lesson 3 on Reacting Masses. There have been 15 questions on calculations since 2009, making it the most commonly tested chemistry topic. To be specific, there have been seven questions on reaction masses. So we will look at this first before looking at percentage yield and relative atomic mass in the next two tutorials. So first of all, let's have a look at the mole. What is the mole? Well, the mole is just the way of defining the amount of a substance. To be specific, the mole is the amount of a substance which contains the same number of particles as the Avogadro's constant. The Avogadro's constant represents a huge number of particles, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. It's not important to remember this number, but it's important to understand that one mole represents a huge number of particles. So what's in a mole? Well, one mole of Cl2 contains one mole of Cl2 molecules, but two moles of Cl atoms. Two moles of aluminium chloride contains two moles of Al3 plus ions, but six moles of Cl minus ions. One mole means the Avogadro's constant number of particles. The word particles encompasses atoms, molecules, ions, and electrons. So one mole does not mean one atom. In the case of Cl2, one mole means one molecule, and therefore there are two moles of Cl atoms. We can define the mass of one mole of a substance to give the molar mass. So the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance, and it's equal to the formula mass of a substance, except it has units. So if you remember back to relative atomic mass, relative formula mass, and relative molecular mass, we can apply these same values to the molar mass. So if chlorine has a relative atomic mass of 35.5, it means that one mole of chlorine weighs 35.5 grams. When you give relative atomic mass, there is no units at all. But when you're talking about molar mass, even though it's the same number, you have units, grams per mole. So for example, water has a formula mass of 18, and therefore one mole of water has a weight of 18 grams. Now let's look at the amount of a substance, the mole, and how it links in to molar mass. Well, if molar mass is the number of grams for one mole, then we can divide the total mass of a sample by the molar mass to find out how many moles we have in that sample. If one mole of water has a mass of 18 grams and you have 36 grams of water, then you have two moles. Reacting masses. Often, BMAT questions will ask you to use the masses of different reactants and products to work out the number of moles present in reactions. Let's try a worked example. For this question, you might need to use a calculator because it isn't designed in a way to be non-calculator friendly, whereas the BMAT official questions will be designed in such a way, and so will the questions at the end of this tutorial. This question is just a worked example to show you how to use reacting masses. Have a go at the question by pausing the video. So step one here would be to calculate the number of moles of propane given in the question. So they tell you that there's three kilograms of propane. Remember, moles is always done in grams. So therefore, convert this to 3000 grams. They tell us that the molar mass of propane is 44. So therefore, we can do 3,000 divided by 44, which gives us 68.2 moles. Next, write a balanced equation for the chemical reaction. This balanced equation tells us that one mole 
of propane reacts with 5 moles of O2. Therefore, we can see that if there are 68.2 moles of propane involved, then we need 5 times as many moles of O2. So, there are 341 moles of O2. Now, we want to convert this into a mass. Well, the molar mass of oxygen, or O2, is 32. So, we do the number of moles, 341, times 32, to give a total mass of 10,900 grams. For this question, you have to be very careful with step 3. You can see that the ratio of propane to O2 is 1 to 5. Be careful to multiply 68.2 by 5, not divide. BMAT candidates often make mistakes by going the wrong way with this conversion. We can also apply moles to gas volumes. At room temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas will have a volume of 24 dm cubed, which is equivalent to 24 litres or 24,000 cm cubed. We can use this equation. Moles of gas equals volume of gas in dm cubed over 24. Or it could be volume of gas in centimetres cubed divided by 24,000. How many moles of gas are in 10,000 centimetres cubed of oxygen? Well, first of all, we can see that the question is in centimetres cubed. So you divide 10,000 centimetres cubed by 24,000 because it's centimetres cubed, not dm cubed, so it's not 24. And therefore, you get the answer 0 0.416 moles. So just a note, when gases react, the ratio of reacting gases is the same as the ratio of reacting moles from before. So for example, if you have one mole of A reacting with two moles of B, then that means that 24 dm cubed of A would react with 48 dm cubed of B. Let's have a look at concentration. So sometimes concentration questions can, can come up in the BMAP. So far, we've looked at solids and gases, but now we'll look at moles in solution. So a concentration of one mole per dm cubed means that one mole of the substance is dissolved in each dm cubed of water. So often, volumes will be given in centimetres cubed. So remember that you have to convert these into dm cubed. 1 dm cubed equals 1000 centimetres cubed. So these are the two important equations. Um, the concentration in grams per dm cubed or the concentration in moles per dm cubed. So the concentration in grams per, per dm cubed is equal to the mass divided by the volume. Concentration in moles per dm cubed is equal to the amount in moles over volume. Let's do some practice. Pause the video and have a go. The answer here is A. So there is 3.25 grams of zinc. Looking at the balanced equation, we can see that one mole of zinc produces one mole of H2. So bear in mind, when they give you an equation in the BMAT, if they don't ask you to balance it, you can assume that it's already balanced for you. Here we have 3.25 grams of zinc. And we need to work out how many moles of zinc this is. Well, one mole of zinc is 65 grams because that's the relative atomic mass given to us. So therefore, we do the amount of 3.25 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 60, to give us 0 0.05 moles. So therefore, there are 0 0.05 moles of zinc and notice how this calculation was quite friendly for someone not using a calculator. Now, 0 0.05 moles of H2 would also be produced because the ratio between zinc and H2 is 1 to 1. Remember, 1 mole of any substance is 24 dm cubed. So therefore, 0 0.05 moles will be 0 0.05 times 24, which is 1.2 dm cubed. Question 2. Pause the video and have a go.
The answer here is A. So first of all, we know that there's one gram of calcium carbonate in one tablet of Tums. So we have to work out the relative formula mass of calcium carbonate. We can work this out to be 100. One gram is therefore 0 0.01 moles. Well, one mole of calcium carbonate reacts with two moles of HCl. So therefore, 0 0.01 moles will react with 0 0.02 moles of HCl. And therefore, we can tell that the final volume will be 0 0.5 dm cubed because the concentration of HCl is 0 0.04 moles per dm cubed. We need 0 0.02 moles, which is half of 1 dm cubed, which is 0 0.5. Thank you for watching this tutorial on reacting masses. Thank you for watching this free BMAT tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock the rest of the 100 tutorials and all 8 ebooks, click here now.